Hello everybody and welcome to the first molding video. I haven't figured out what I want to coin these videos as. It would have been perfect if I was posting these on Mondays, but Mondays are not one of the days that I'm posting videos. So um, I'm trying to figure out what like a good Thursday name would be to kind of put these guys together. But today we are going to be making the cow ears that you may have seen in my clean cotton cow soap video or um, that you may have seen on my clean cotton cow soap. So right here what you're looking at is like my big old bin of soap dough and a couple of my tools, cookie cutters, knives, stuff like that. Um, Typically the stuff that is in this bin is the stuff that I am currently using or working on for that specific release. I do have multiple other boxes that contain a whole bunch of tools and stuff. Um, anything that I'm using, I will link in the description box below if there is a link that goes along with it. So if you would like to grab it, then you can and you know exactly where I got it from. Um, some of the stuff that I've gotten has been from Michaels, from Hobby Lobby, from Joann's. Um, I try to do my best to find like the most affordable type options in terms of tools like this because they are just so, there's so many different ones. Like I have um, this entire bag of stuff that I got from Amazon. I think this was like 10-ish dollars or something and I had actually purchased an even bigger one of these when I first started with soap dough, which is where these original tools came from. Um, I'm very unorganized, if you can see. I've been experimenting with a bunch of different things and trying to do um, a lot to get ready for this fall release. And after being sick for about a week and then I had that small vacation for 4th of July, I'm headed back to Vermont in August. There's a lot of different things that I have going on this summer. is such a busy time for me. Um, so I'm already behind. I just got my fragrance oils, uh, tomorrow by the time that you, or yesterday, <laughs> by the time that you guys are watching this video. Um, so I'm kind of starting to move in the direction of getting everything done and trying to prepare, but I wanted to make sure that I got the videos that you guys asked for in terms of molding out before I moved on to molding the fall collection. I don't know how well this is going to go. This is the first video that I'm filming, so I'll have to just kind of wait and see what happens. I'm sure I'll eventually come up with a really good way to handle all of this stuff. I'll hopefully be able to get new tripods and do all of that kind of fun stuff, but for the time being, we are going to go ahead and just do the cow ears and then the next video for the following Thursday will be the watermelon lemonade soap which has three different things. It has the lemon, it has the um, watermelon slice, and then it also has the soap dough straw that I made. Okay, so let me just go over really quickly what I have here in terms of what you're going to kind of need for today's video if you want to follow along as I'm doing this. I had no video tutorials when I was making these cow ears, and if you saw that video, you would know that I actually got inspiration for this soap from Danny from Starcross Soapery, but she didn't have any tutorials on how she made them, so I was kind of just winging it at the time to see what I could do um, to kind of make these ears come to life. I was looking at photos of cows and stuff like that, so I have three colors. I have my black which is um, black oxide and activated charcoal. I have my white, which is just titanium dioxide. And then I have my pink, and this pink is ballet slippers from Mad Micah's. And it is also a little bit of titanium dioxide because I really wanted that baby cut, like type of a pink, the really, really baby pink. I have a rolling pin that I got in a kit from Amazon, a paintbrush that I got from Michaels. This little jar just has water in it. I have um, some tweezers that I may or may not use. Typically, when working with white, it's very, very, very difficult to keep like little black fuzzies out of it and stuff like that just because it's already in the air and stuff like that. So I try my best to pull those out wherever I can. Um, again, I've like locked myself in a room, cleaned and sanitized the entire room and still ended up having like little black pieces or fuzzies in there that you just have to pull out when you're done. And then I have this kit that I got on Amazon, which is just cookie cutters. They're small cookie cutters. And basically what I do is I mold 
um, what you can see here, I still have it the way um, that I left it. I just took the circle and I molded it a little bit to kind of represent a teardrop. You can get teardrop cookie cutters if you don't want to mess with this, but I can just push mine back if I want another round circle. Um, and then I also used the second one, um, the second biggest one out of the three for the pink part. And I'll, like I said, I'll link all the stuff that I can below so you can kind of see what all of that looks like. I also have a knife if I need it. Um, and then finally, I have plastic wrap. Plastic wrap, when working with soap dough, is incredibly, incredibly important. And before I forget and before I go any further, please do not ask me for this soap dough recipe because it is not mine. I will link the, uh, the book for the recipe Below, I am using B from Sorcery Soap, her recipe. I am not going to give it away for free. I paid for it. If you would like it, you must also pay for it. Um, there's a lot of people out there that do. I believe Danny also gives hers out for free. I'll link her below too. Um, I don't know how hers works. I've never used it before. I have only ever used B from Sorcery Soap's recipe. Um, she does have some free recipes on her blog as well, and I'll link those below. Um, but please do not ask me personally for the recipe because I don't, I'm not going to be the one that gives it away, but I will link resources below so that you can find it yourself. So the one thing that I will say about these ears is they do look a little bit funky at first, um, before you like actually put them in the soap itself. So when I first started making them, I thought they looked absolutely terrible because they just look really funky without being in the actual soap itself. But once you get it in the soap, it looks super duper cute so don't worry about that i know that's like one of the things that i worried about a little bit um so the first thing that we're gonna do is kind of just knead our soap dough so your soap dough should be pliable enough that you can um mess with it with your hands it's very warm here i would say it's probably well, I know it's like 85 degrees outside right now. It's probably like 75, maybe 78 degrees in here. So this is already pretty malleable. Normally in the wintertime when your soap dough is cold, it's harder to use. So I don't have to put so much work into this part. I've already disinfected this table, by the way. when the soap like when you haven't um messed with it a little bit before it can be a little bit difficult so basically i'm just kind of trying to make it so everything is gone together really nicely and if you find that your soap dough is too hard you can take your finger add a little bit of water in it and then just mix it up together and it'll make it a little bit more pliable for you so i'm going to set the black um aside up here and i'm going to pull out a bit of plastic i got mine from like target i think yeah target doesn't really matter the reason why i do this is because i don't like using cornstarch when i first got started i used cornstarch on all of my soap dough creations and it just created a white like dusty look that i couldn't get rid of so instead of doing that i've decided to just roll whatever I need to roll out or cut whatever I need to cut out into the actual soap dough um, in the plastic. So I'm going to roll this out into a, like a ball, set it down. It doesn't have to look perfect or anything like that. And then I'm going to put this over top of it. And this is how I'm going to roll it out. That way it doesn't stick to the table, it doesn't tear, or anything crazy like that. And then you can just basically roll it out like you would roll out fondant or Play-Doh or anything like that. Typically, I'll go back and forth a few times. And then when I start to see this little bit here kind of like stick to the soap dough, I'll take the pieces apart and I'll flip it over. That way it doesn't get bunched up and leave like a whole bunch of little marks on the soap dough itself. And then I'll straighten everything out, pull it back over, and keep going until it's my desired thickness. Now with these ears, 
it depends on how thick that you want to go like I totally went random with my thickness on them um I didn't really care that much to be truthful I was just in the process of trying to get them done and make sure that they looked okay so it's totally up to you on how thick that you want to go I don't have a ruler on me so I'm not going to say like go a certain thickness or, or anything like that also please note that I am by no means a soap dough master. Um, I'm just going to show you kind of like what I've done, what I've created, um, give you some, a couple tutorials on the stuff that I've made. B from Sorcery Soap is really the soap dough queen. She is just absolutely amazing. She has a Patreon that has a ton of videos. I've learned a lot from her. Um, and you know, she's just, she's awesome so if you are really wanting to kind of go deeper with soap dough i will help you get started and i'll give you some tutorials based on the stuff that i've created but at the end of the day you really are going to want to check me out and check out her stuff okay so now that i have this rolled out this is kind of where it gets really interesting and i'm going to recommend that you pick up the white and just place it back down that way when you do the next part you don't have like a bunch of wrinkles on the back so the way that I get the little black pieces on here is totally random like I'm basically gonna take off a piece that's a little bit big and just make it look the way that I want to just totally random this is like the longest part of the process so like make it look like this and then place it down like it's really as simple as as just doing that randomly if you find that your soap dough is too sticky what I've done in the past to kind of help make it less sticky is leave it out for a small short period of time like start by using five minutes and then maybe ten minutes if it's not enough um, and so on and so forth because basically What's keeping the soap dough malleable is not letting the water evaporate out of it. And this can be as intense or as not intense as you would like. It's totally up to you. Um, you can try it and if you decide that you want them to be, you know, more or less, then you can, you can make that decision. I'm just kind of doing random stuff at this point to try to fill in the gaps a little bit and kind of make it look a little bit more cow-like like obviously this doesn't look like you just took skin off a cow or anything like that but you know it's not supposed to it's the thing that I like about soap dough is yes you can make things look pretty real but like I don't like to put eyes or anything on my creations or stuff like that because when you do stuff like that it starts to make it a little too real and stuff that's too real kind of weirds me out a little bit I don't know if I'm the only one that feels that way but I like my creations to not have you know eyes or noses you'll see when I make some of the little characters I don't want to spoil anything but some of the stuff that I'm molding for the fall collection you'll notice that I don't put any eyes or mouths on it not that it would be hard because it would be hard um, but at the same time, it's just kind of one of those things where sometimes you don't need to have every single detail of something um, to make it look like 100% real. It still needs to have that usability factor. And although a lot of the stuff that I do make, people say is, you know, too good to use, I like to make stuff that people, you know, will eventually use because at the end of the day it is, you know, soap and I want them to want to be able to use it. Okay, so I'm going to call that good for now, and <clears throat> I'm going to take my black and wrap it back up with the rest of the black to make sure that it stays for the next time that I want to use it. Um, and I typically, depending on how often I'm using it, like in between releases, I will put all of my soap dough in a plastic bag and try to get all of the air out of it. I wrap them still individually in plastic wrap and then I put them in the plastic bags because we're trying to make sure to get rid of all of the air that's like even possible of being in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to really 
very carefully because um, we don't want to break anything put the plastic back over it and just slightly roll over top and make it look like everything is all one like piece of whatever one big piece of soap dough I guess and when you can run your fingers across it and not tell the difference between the black and the white then that's a good sign you'll also see like I put weight this is way too close I shouldn't have put that there and this is also a really good lesson of when you do this the soap dough pieces that you put together will eventually um, get bigger when you are rolling it like this and I'm not putting very much pressure down I'm I'm really using the weight of the roller itself and just the weight of me putting my hands over it lightly um, to to push down what this looks like uh, to push down the black so now that that is done I'm going to again pull it off pull it off the back as well and then I'm gonna fold this over again you'll you'll notice that I like to keep this covered a lot because not only does this sort of protect it from the air while you're working with it but it also makes it easier to use our little cookie cutter so again this was a circle that I just molded into or kind of like pressed into a um, teardrop shape or an ear type of a shape and all I'm gonna do while the plastic is over it is push like find a spot push down and do a little wiggle not a big wiggle just a little tiny wiggle and you can see the little imprint here of what it looks like and I'm gonna try to do this as many times as I can because remember we can't just you know roll this up in a ball and use it again it's once it's done you gotta you know mix it together and make a gray color and, and use that for a different soap dough project you can't roll this back out and use it again so you have to kind of be careful with the way that you're placing things so that you're able to get as many of them out as possible because we don't want to waste soap dough obviously okay so now that you have them I got lucky here and I was able to get four pairs of ears out of this so it's even. You'll really carefully and gently take off the plastic and sometimes the ear will go with it and other times it won't so you'll just have to wait and see what happens. Like for this one for example it's still kind of stuck in there. Just be really gentle with it. This one's really stuck in there so all I'm going to do is just put this back over it and push down and it should come right out but you have to push it out and sometimes when you push stuff out like that which is why I don't like doing it it'll mess up the actual style or it'll mess up the way that it looks I'm gonna do that again for this one but sometimes you obviously you have to do it and there's not much that you can do about it some of the first ones that I did I pressed a little harder on And I found that the thickness doesn't really matter as much on these guys and it doesn't really have to be the same either um, which is nice because that's kind of like one less thing you have to worry about if you wanted to do something like a Dalmatian or something like that this is like another way that you could do it if you wanted to okay so those are my ears so now that this is used basically what I'm gonna do is crumble it up and just throw it in a bag to use at a later date if you wanted to you could keep it like this and keep it like a marble and roll it out and use it as a, a marble um, you could I don't know use it as just different embellishments or something like that on your soap if you wanted to but for now I'm gonna take this piece and I am going to put it in the plastic wrap with the rest of the white that I have over here that should have been wrapped up by now You'll also notice that I'm trying to keep the same plastic wrap that I started with in terms of rolling out the white across the board here. Um, the reason why is because I don't, I don't want to waste a whole bunch of plastic wrap. Like, 
it's not the best thing for the environment. So I'm trying my best to make everything last as long as possible. But at this point, we are done using this so we can put that away. And now we're gonna pull out the pink. Now, thankfully, when you're doing one color stuff like this, it's very easy because if you, you know, roll out too much or you cut out too much, you can just roll it back together and put it back with the original color. Sometimes when you do stuff like this, you're, you can't when you do multiple colors. So it's really important to um, pay attention to that. And this pink in particular, because I use that titanium dioxide with this, is still like borderline sticky um, and almost should sit out. Like you can see see if I can get that again you can kind of see that my finger marks are pulling up soap dough and that's a good sign that this is a little too sticky and it should sit out I've already used this to make this soap dough creation before so I'm just gonna use it again and, and call it good but if something like this is happening and your soap dough doesn't look smooth when you're rolling it around in your hands then chances are it does need another moment to kind of like sit out and let that water evaporate out of it just a little I didn't make a lot of that pink because I knew I was just doing cow ears with it so um, I try to I try to really pay attention to what colors I'm going to be using and how much of it that way I don't have like a whole bunch of soap dough left over and the reason for that is just because I don't have a lot of space so I try to pay attention to to doing that every single time that I make some sort of a soap dough creation for either um, like now I had a little extra to make to show you guys but normally I would use all of it like I have just barely enough of the um, watermelon inside color of like the actual watermelon flesh to make the wa the next watermelon video video that I do for you guys like that one is just I'm gonna use all of it to make those those embeds to show you so once you have the pink rolled out as per usual, like I've said, um, try to remove it from the plastic wrap and then sit it back down or lay it back down, whatever you want to call it. Pop the plastic wrap back over it and then you'll take your, sec your second, um, second of the smaller circles, kind of make it into a teardrop. It doesn't have to be super like close. If you can hold it up to the inside of the ear and it kind of looks like it'll fit, then that's really good enough. So like you can see, it, it kind of goes together to fit. So what I'm gonna do now is just put the same thing like I did before, push down and wiggle, push down and wiggle. So now really carefully try to peel the colors away. I have to be a little bit more careful than you just because um, my soap dough is so still not where it should be, which is funny because I made this soap dough back in April, April or May. I made this soap dough and it's still really sticky. Okay, so now once you have these, this is where the water is going to come into play. So take off all of your little pink inserts for the ears. And then at this point, you can basically disregard all plastic wrap that you aren't using. Because you're, you're not going to need it anymore. What I like to do is do everything at the same time. So I'm going to lay out all of my ears. And then what I'm going to do from here, let me move them down so it's not, so it's a little bit more center for you. Then what I'm going to do here, which this has a little bit of red on it from past soap dough things that I've done. Clean that off a little bit. So then 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet each of the ears and I'm not going to go crazy. I'm just going to put a little bit of water on it because you don't want to overboard it and then it'll, it'll cause more issues. Just put a little bit of water on there. And this water part is kind of like a learning curve. You'll know when it's too much when you do it and then you'll know when it's too little and all of that stuff. <clears throat> so then from there, I like to clean up the way that the, the outer ears look just from pulling stuff apart. I'll place it down and just lightly push to kind of adhere it to the back. And then if some of the water comes out on the side, you can take your finger and just run it across. Same thing here. And it's okay that it doesn't look, um, like it doesn't look super smooth, that's okay. It's not that big of a deal. But you do wanna kind of work a little bit fast because the water is gonna start to evaporate as soon as it hits the soap. Um, so you want to kind of try your best to get all of them on as quick as you can. And I obviously didn't cut enough, so I'm just going to focus on the first three sets and then put the other, the last set aside because I'm not going to go ahead and... It's not like I'm making this soap anytime soon, so I can just set these aside for later. Um, I'm going to use the second part of the plastic wrap that I just used to roll the pink out. I'll let these dry and then I'll wrap them up so that I can still use them um, to make these ears when I decide to make this soap again. So now that you have the ears, the pink on the ears, the only part that's left on this little imp like project is just folding them. And then after you fold them, you can insert them into your soap. Um, so the way that I did this was I kind of just wung it or I winged winged it wung it I guess would be the correct way to say it and basically what I did is I put my finger like this I folded it and I pinched like I said they're gonna look really funky at first but once you stick them in the soap they'll look a lot better <laughs> I promise I promise they'll look a lot better there's one. Do the same thing again. Finger. my I use my pointer finger. Fold with my middle finger and my thumb. And then kind of push together. And they aren't all going to look the same. And that's fine. You kind of just have to get over that. And then I set mine on a little rack um, on my dr on my curing rack for my soap to sit for a couple days or until I decide to use them. And then what I do from there is just plop them on the soap. I put them all together and pop them on the soap. I'll show you up close what they look like. And that, my friends, is how you make really cute little cow ears. And I, I really love the way that they look and really love the way that they turn out. And they make for some really stinking cute soap. Um, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like the video. Um, again, comment below if there's anything else that you would like to see. If you have any questions, let me know below as well. I'm not going to do a question of the day today just because this is the first molding video that I've done. So I'll leave that space open for your questions. And in the next one, I will do a question of the day. I'm really excited to show you Instagram makes my soap on Sunday. I'm really excited to see how that soap comes out. I haven't made it yet per usual. So I'm excited to see how that comes out. And I will see you guys same time, same place here on Sunday. All right. Bye.